guys that have dog walked them who genuinely who are you the first person that he went back to his ex ladies and gentlemen this is so embarrassing like are you not embarrassed and was talking badly about me is because they no longer had the privilege to talk to me not me teaching you guys how to spit game like we're literally at bootsy bellows why are we crying right now Hey what's up you guys, it's Michaela, and welcome, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you guys know me, I am the queen of f***ing Yap City. Like all I do is talk, blah, 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 blah all day run my mouth and so what better video to film than me just sitting in my car drinking a little drinky drink and yapping away i go through my comments every single day and literally want to ball my eyes out because one i'm an emotional mess and two you guys leave these sweetest notes to me and some of my favorite comments that i receive is actually a lot of you guys telling me that i remind you of like a big sister figure or a best friend a motherly figure not too much with the mother one though not too much not too fucking much and that just makes me feel so happy because i never had a sister growing up and that's why i feel like me and my friends really like we, we were really locked in is because they never had sisters either and so i feel like we kind of always bonded together in that manner and we we're always able to give each other really good advice and just be there for one another and so that's what this entire video is about just me yip yap in my mouth and answering some big sister girl talk advice questions but I gotta keep an eye out for Selena. I asked you guys on my Instagram and my YouTube community page to send me in some advice questions that you guys would want me to answer. And y'all went in because the question's like, Loki T. With that being said, I'm so excited to get into it. I literally just placed my Dunkin' order because it's going to be a long one. I'm going to be spitballing at you guys. So grab yourself a drink of your own, a little snack, and let's just like sit down and talk like we're on FaceTime, like we're best friends because we are. Like me and you guys, like we locked in real bad. So I'm going to run inside Dunkin' real quick, grab my drink, and then we can get into it. Okay, so I just got back to my car. I got my drink. Cheers. Little taste test. Okay, tea. It tastes like ass. No bueno, no bueno. Mwah. No boss. I normally get a coffee when I go, but I just want it to be different. I want it to be trendy and unique. Hipster, if you will. Mm, never again. Okay, wait, you know it's serious when I pull out the microphone. That's how you know I'm about to go in. Okay, the first question that I received is, what are your biggest red flags? How much time do we have? My biggest red flag in a guy is guys that consistently talk about their exes. Wee-oo, wee-oo. <laughs> Like wrap it up wrap it up if you are talking to a guy and you notice that he is always bringing up his ex-girlfriend or ex flings girls in general into almost every single conversation that you have run because I promise you that nobody brings up the girls that they're with or the guys that they're with except for a person that is not over them I will never forget I used to talk to this guy you guys are literally gonna think I'm exaggerating but I swear to goodness he could not go three hours hours without mentioning his ex and i really didn't think of it as a red flag at this time because he kept talking about her poorly and it doesn't matter if he talks about her period red flag run you need to leave. and i really didn't think of it as a red flag in the moment because he would say really negative things about her he would call her crazy that's another red flag a guy that calls his ex crazy he probably did something to her to make her crazy if you are talking about somebody consistently that means you are thinking about them consistently and i'm sure most of you guys can assume by now as soon as we stop talking who is the first person that he went back to his ex ladies and gentlemen so yeah that is one of the biggest red flags they have just a guy that will consistently talk about his ex whether it's good or bad is just a no-go in my book and then when it comes to red flags for friends friends that are always asking you how you are what you're up to what is the tea with you and your mans oh are you and this person still cool blah 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 a person that is always asking you about you and your life but never reciprocates it so as soon as you ask them like oh like what about you like what's up with you it's oh nothing much 
complete hush mode. It's very telling the people that will always ask you about you and your life and you and your boo and you and your friends and stuff like that, but never tell you anything in return. And to me, that's a red flag because it kind of puts into perspective of, are you asking because you genuinely care about me and my life? Or are you asking because you're nosy? And then when it comes to red flags, just in general about people across the board, red flag number one, people that are rude to wait staff, like people that are rude to baristas, the people at the drive throughs waiters. If people are so unpromptedly rude to them, I'm so sorry. Like I cannot be associated with you because to me, it's like, oh my gosh, like this is so embarrassing. Like, are you not embarrassed? And then also I'm going to keep this short and simple, but like people that complain a lot, you're bringing down the vibes. Like, like we're literally at Bootsy Bellows. Why are we crying right now? So the next question that I received is how to cut off toxic friends. I am such a like, let's talk it out. Let's find a neutral ground and then just go our separate ways type of person. I will always end off things on a somewhat neutral ground with people. Not every situation will grant that privilege, but most situations you guys can get away with just like talking it out and then cutting each other off. But most likely that can only be successful if you guys have some type of common respect for each other. And a lot of the times that does happen in toxic friendships. Like the reason why it's so hard to cut off toxic friends is because you do love them in some manner. Like if it was all hate and all just like, I don't fuck with you, then most of the times cutting them off is easy. And I do truly feel like most situations can be resolved like that. But most people in this day and age, we just have too much pride that we're not able to talk things through like that. But if you are able to do that, if you're able to take the high route, I would always say do so because then you can walk away with the situation with no regrets. I have never regretted taking the high route and ending a relationship, but I've nine times out of 10 regretted yelling at somebody, cussing them out, getting revenge, all that stuff. But maybe you feel like Michaela, like I can't even do the high route. Like I just need to cut them out and you can do so as simple as that it's just cutting them off like i said you don't have to kind of be in their face all the time you don't have to be consistently hanging out with them and checking up on them you can just let them know like i think it would be best for us just to no longer be in communication because at the end of the day like you need to be your own best friend and if somebody is treating your best friend as shitty you wouldn't let that and the same thing goes for yourself like if somebody is treating you nasty and toxic to you like you have to be able to respect yourself enough to tell that person like like that's not cool and if you want to cut them out of your life you have to figure out what's the best approach for you and like what's gonna make you like I said when you walk away feel the most good about yourself some people are super confrontational some people aren't some people like a quick block and I'm done some people don't and it also depends on like how toxic is this friend so just assess the situation and realize when it's time for you to walk away because you need to do what's best for yourself and your own mental health okay so the next question I received is how to shoot your shot I think if you want to shoot your shot at a guy you have to have some level of I don't care cannot care about their response you have to be prepared prepared for them yes to reciprocate because you're that bitch like of course they should reciprocate of course they're gonna want you back but also if there's the slightest chance that they just like your comment or maybe they just left you on red like you have to be okay with any outcome that comes from it and if a part of you feels like you're gonna get super embarrassed or have a panic attack because they just left you on red or they just liked your message or they just said thanks and that was it then don't do it because you don't want to be stuck in that mind game of like regret and just like hating the situation in general so that's the only time i will shoot my shot at a guy is if i'm totally fine with whatever response i'm gonna get and you have to be so detached from the guy in the situation and confident in yourself that like oh they don't want me like oh that really sucks for you you're lost like that's crazy they say no Oh well, on to the next. So I feel like that's the first thing is that you have to just be so detached from them, so confident in yourself that like no matter what they say, it can't phase you. And then I feel like the best way to shoot your shot in person is to compliment them. Find like a common ground that you guys can bond over. Or if you're in the same class together after class, you can be like, dude, did you pick up on any of that? Like I did not understand a single thing that the professor said. Like one of those things. You just have to find some type of mutual talking point, a talking point that they can respond to. You're just like, oh, cool shoes. They're probably just gonna say oh thanks and then the conversation kind of cuts off there you have to give them something that something of substance not me teaching you guys how to spit game and then when it comes to online shooting your shot online is my favorite because i just feel like i can just close my phone and just like never have to think about it ever again but shooting a shot online like you can just find like a meme or anything like maybe you guys had a conversation in person and you end up finding like a tiktok video that talks about exactly what you guys were talking about you can send that to them or anything i've done that before <laughs> or if you guys had a conversation in person you could just like dm them about said conversation i would say just shoot your shot because at the end of the day life is so short like YOLO.
The next question is how to not care about people talking badly about you. I feel like not caring about people talking badly about you, just not caring about judgment is such an acquired skill. I feel like everybody cares to some degree. Like they might not care as much as the next person, but everybody does. And it's natural and it's normal. And it's okay if you hear something that somebody has said about you, especially if you don't deem it to be truthful and for it to hurt your feelings. I'm gonna tell you guys a story and then kind of connect it with my tips and advice. Not too long ago, I had to cut off somebody from my life. It was like a toxic friendship in terms of every single time I was with them, it felt like I was walking on eggshells. Like I always felt nervous about how they were going to react to me because when this person got angry, it was like the entire world revolved around them. And so nobody's having a good time. You know what I mean? I say all that to say we were still really good friends on the surface. And so when I had to cut this person off from my life, it was really hard. And I couldn't have that conversation where I could really sit down with them and talk to them about it. It was one of those things where I just had to kind of stop talking to them less and a little bit less and a little bit less and point where we just no longer in communication you can probably guess that that person was very unhappy with me they had gone around and had told a bunch of people a bunch of different things about me and when i say a bunch of people i mean i had seven eight different people walking up to me texting me calling me telling me that this person was saying x y and z about me whether they were telling the story about what happened or how i was a bad friend how i'm fake as fuck like they were saying everything under the sun i was just like okay whatever and so when it came to them talking and leading back to this question, the only reason why this person was talking badly about me is because they no longer had the privilege to talk to me. And it's said a lot, especially like when you hear that somebody's talking shit about you, it's most likely because they are talking badly about you to people that you know. And no smart, rational human being is going to talk negatively about somebody to a common friend. And if they are, they almost want it to get back to you. Like they want other people to know in your circle so it can somehow get back to you because you know longer allow this person access into your life they need to communicate with you in some form and that's their way of doing it just kind of have to feel sorry for them when you hear somebody's talking badly about you about things that you know not to be true you kind of feel bad for them in a way and the reason why i'm telling you guys this story in relation to this question is because i feel like most people that talk badly about people are people that were once friends it is somebody that you do not know at all like just some rando on the street that's talking shit in that case like fuck them like <laughs> you should not even care about some random person at all not give like a second of your energy because like who genuinely who are you and here's another thing i've definitely learned this within this past year you will always be the villain in somebody else's story you will always be the bad guy to somebody and it's simply because people have different perceptions of what happened and you just have to learn to be okay with that everyone has to experience life through their own set of eyes through their own set of ears and so they interpret situations and how things went about in a different way than you are going to i mean you don't have to be okay with what they're saying you don't have to be hip hip hooray about about it but you have to be okay with the fact that it's just like it's whatever and when you go about life with that approach of like it's whatever life will get so much easier those judgments will kind of roll off your shoulder like it was nothing their words have no valor when you know your own truth okay so the next question i received is how to get over a breakup you tell me sister no i'm just kidding i actually think i am somebody that when i get into like breakups or like the end of situationships whatever you want to call it i'm somebody that i will have my week of crying i will have my week of tears pouring down like bedridden and then i will get back up and keep it pushing like you could have done me so dirty go ghosted me, cheated on me, whatever it may be. And I will get back up the next day and keep it pushing because life moves on. And I have goals I need to achieve. I have places I need to be. I have degrees I need to get. I have jobs I need to secure. And ain't no way in hell that you're gonna take that away from me like you already took away some pride and some dignity that i had you're not gonna take away my future and that's the exact approach that i want you guys to have that you guys are the most accomplished and will be the most accomplished people out there you guys have school to attend you have jobs that you need to show up for you have people in your family that are counting on you you have yourself that is counting on you and you cannot let this other person dictate you in your life and it is so much easier said than done but you just have to show up and that's the biggest thing show up up sad show up angry show up with social battery at one and what you'll find is that when showing up your mind will be preoccupied and things will just get easier and easier it is so true is that time heals all wounds like it is so hard in week one but it gets a little bit easier day by day shit will hit you like waves like some days it will be really really high and you're just like f this guy like i didn't need him and then the next day later you're just like i want him back like you know what i mean like you're gonna go in waves just like waves like 
ocean keeps moving like you cannot stop the waves from happening what you can learn is to just ride with them keep yourself preoccupied remind yourself that you have bigger and better waiting for you go out with your friends have a good time oh my gosh that is my biggest tip when i was at some of the lowest points in my life i was able to get over it so easily because my mind was constantly occupied with other things get your head in the books study hard go full force at your job go to parties hang out with your friends go to the bars get yourself your little free drinks from guys journal see a therapist talk things through just keeping your mind occupied is the best way you're going to get over a breakup 100 percent, it will get easier how to get motivation to accomplish your goals i was actually just talking to my boss about this like three days ago and she had said something along the lines about how like in this career like not every single day is going to be super glamorous and super uplifting and fun and that some days you really just have to trudge to work but you got to do it anyways telling her that i so agree because motivation doesn't last forever like motivation is what's going to get you started get your gears grinded the real determining factor is if you reach your goals or not is discipline discipline is showing up even when you don't want to even when motivation is no longer there and so it's not really how do you get motivation to achieve your goals it's how to establish discipline and motivation is what's going to get you to establish those goals in the first place but to actually achieve them that's discipline that's creating good habits for yourself and once again showing up even when you don't want to you're day one is not going to determine whether you get your goals or not it's going to be your day 40 that excitement that you feel on day one that's motivation but what's going to get your butt up on day 40 is pure discipline and creating those systems around you okay the next question i got he did me so dirty but i still want him back what do i do girl stand up no i'm just kidding i'm not kidding but i am kidding my friends always have told me that i'm the number one person that they go to with boy advice she told me she was like you're the only person that hasn't judged me when it came to guys it's because i understand like i know exactly what it feels like i know what it feels like to be absolutely dogged on and still want him back and i know that feeling and i know that embarrassment that comes from myself and how much like i didn't need to hear the external voices tell me how stupid i was because i felt stupid myself and i say all that to say i will never stand here on my high throne and my little pedestal that like oh like why would you take him back because i know what it's like but because i know what it's like i also know what it's like to not take them back even when you want to and so this is where i'm going to give some um, Michaela's tough love of the day. You need to understand why do you want him back so badly? Girls are reluctant to say this, but the reason why they want them back is because they don't love themselves enough. And that doesn't mean that girls don't think that they're pretty. Like a girl can be like, oh, I'm absolutely beautiful. I'm so capable. I know I'm going to have a great job. Like I know I'm hot and like everything like that, but it still doesn't mean that they truly love themselves. And it's because we accept the love that we think we deserve. So if you accept a love that cheats on you, he lies, that he verbally, physically, Physically, mentally abuses you that he doesn't prioritize spending time with you that he doesn't prioritize texting you every day if you accept that then you're basically saying that like this is the love that you think you deserve in your life and i don't want that for you guys i want you guys to realize that the love that you deserve is so much bigger and better than you could have ever conceptualized you deserve a guy that's going to be faithful a guy that's going to stand up and show out and proudly present you as his girlfriend you deserve a guy that's going to shower you with flowers and not just apology flowers you deserve a guy that's constantly going to want to text you not because you have been bickering at him to constantly text you but because he can't go an hour without talking to you and i don't want you to ever have to settle for less my friends are the most gorgeous people you've ever seen they are the smartest people you've ever met they are so sweet so kind are always thinking about other people they deserve the freaking world and i have seen them settle for the most bottom of the barrel ass people take back guys that have dog walked them that have metaphorically spat on them and they take them back and i'm just like i wish you could see you from my eyes like i wish you could see how amazing and how and like the love that you deserve you deserve a prince with a carriage and everything all the horses you know we settle because we think that we can't get any better we think that this is the only guy that's gonna you know be able to understand us and the only guy that you know knows me so well he's like my best friend like i've heard it i've said it but just know that like he is just a guy like he is not the love of your life he is literally just a guy 
Hit them with your car! You are so deserving of something so amazing. So why settle for less than? This person said, how to be outgoing. I follow your Instagram and it looks like you're always going out and having fun, but I'm super shy. What should I do? Fake it. Uh, pretend. Fake it? Yeah. Until we make it? I mean, why not? It's either <laughs> that or cry myself to sleep. Who wants to do that? Just fake it. Nobody can tell. Nobody can tell if a person is naturally shy or naturally outgoing. You fake it till you make it because it's kind of like a muscle. The more you work it out, the stronger it becomes and the easier it becomes. I am somebody that I am naturally so shy. It is god awful. Like I have so much social anxiety, it kills me. But when I got to college, I just knew that I wanted this experience for myself. If it's something that you wanna do, like you wanna have this experience, you wanna meet new people, you wanna go out, your future self will thank you for it. Get out of your comfort zone. It's a life worth living. And also you don't have to equate being shy to like, oh, I can't go out. Like you can still be a shy person and still have an amazing time with your friends and vice versa. One of my best Best friends is the most outgoing person you will ever meet she could have a conversation with a freaking bird like she will have conversations in elevators on park benches but she hates going out she hates going to the club she hates going to the bars that's not her scene she just likes to be home cuddled up with a movie and it doesn't mean that she's not an outgoing person it just means that her version of a good night and an unwind time is alone and same thing for me I'm naturally a shy person I have to force myself to have good conversations with people that I don't know but at the end of the day I am still somebody that like Likes to go to clubs and bars so you don't have to equate one with the other if you're a shy person you could still live this fun and amazing life that you dream of make it till you make it you got this nobody knows the difference how to deal with loneliness i feel like i have no friends first off i know you feel like you don't have any friends but that's a lie because you have me and we're besties but on a more serious note i know exactly what you mean i know how that feels and loneliness is not an inherently good feeling I challenge you to think like where does your loneliness stem from does it stem from comparison which i know is what happens to a lot of people is a lot of people don't feel lonely or feel FOMO until they go on social media and they see people that they know and they're you know going on trips with their friends and they're going to bars and clubs and they're always hanging out they're going to the beach they're making moves like they're always doing something with somebody and so that comparison game of like oh damn like it's Friday night like why do I have no plans like I'm not going out with anybody is like those thoughts like is your loneliness stemming from comparison because if it is I would say like honestly a lot of it isn't always real i'm not one of those people that like shits on social media because i love social media and i hate the idea of like oh my gosh everything on social media is fake because i really don't subscribe to that i don't think that everything on social media is fake but i will say that social media doesn't show you everything it is definitely a highlight reel like being so transparent with you guys like i have gone on trips and i've probably gone to clubs and gone to bars and posted about it and it looked like so much fun and it probably was a lot of fun but what you didn't see fights me and my friends yelling at each other us throwing drinks giving each other the silent treatment like those are moments that you don't see you know when they say like oh you go to miami and like you don't speak again type of thing i was talking to a friend i'm not gonna say who because i don't want to put her business on the internet but she went to cabo and i asked her about it when she got back and i was like oh my god you look like you had so much fun because she posted all these like fun videos and stuff and she was like oh my god girl trip from hell and i just burst out laughing because i thought that was so funny and she was like yeah like i had a lot of fun like but she was like girl like there was some moments in there that like made me want to hop a flight back to the states like it was bad sometimes and so that's what i mean is don't let the comparison of other people having fun make you feel like you therefore need to also be doing something else because you don't always see the full picture on social media but i know that's not just loneliness sometimes loneliness isn't even comparison but just that you know feeling that you get late at night when like I said you're not doing anything and I would say that sometimes loneliness works for our better it can be such a good thing in moments where I didn't have a lot of friends I felt a different kind of peace and a lot of the times I feel like those moments where you feel like you have nobody God uses you in such a beautiful and unique way instead of looking at it as loneliness look at it as God is giving you that peace that you've been praying for because a lot of the times that's what it is like we look up to the sky and we're just like damn like I want some security I want some peace and then all our friends disappear and we're like hmm that's weird that's suspicious like maybe God needed to remove those people from your life so that you can have that second of peace that you so badly craved for that you so badly desired and that season of loneliness that you're living is really that 
season of peace that you've been praying for damn mic drop eight with that one your time will come you will meet the people that are meant to be in your life and it will feel amazing you will meet your closest people the people that you look at and you're like damn like i like these are my maid of honors these are my bridesmaids like these are the people that i feel the happiest with and it's going to make it that much better because you went through that season of loneliness like you are going to learn to appreciate your friends even more put yourself out there join clubs join facebook groups go out there make small talk with people meet the friends of your friends talk to kids at school compliment people make little connections here and there and you will find the invisible string that connects you guys all don't worry about the season of loneliness it is exactly that a season so it means it cannot last forever okay you guys that was it for today's video i do hope you guys enjoyed this little chit chat big sister advice video i loved it i honestly had so much fun just sitting here and just talking to you guys giving you guys my two cents on situations and i hope you guys enjoyed it too with that being said don't forget to follow me on all my social media so you know when i'm going to film this video next time so you can ask your own personal question you guys already know the drill you're in my entire world i love you oh so so much and i'll talk to you in my next one